I want to know more about AKUEB. What's the story behind it, and how is it so different from existing boards in Pakistan? All right. Uh, so I, I've talked about some of the issues uh, yeah. in the learning and the assessment, but I'll take you back to the mid 1990s. Uh, you know, AKU Examination Board. Uh, is not a brainchild of AKU. It's a brainchild of Educationists of Pakistan. They came to AKU president at that time uh, with a request to establish um, an examination board uh, led by the Aga Khan University. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a task force that that was uh, made, which sent a proposal to His Highness the Chancellor of the Aga Khan University, who then approved it. And then in uh, in November 2002, uh, through the ordinance of the government of Pakistan, uh, AKU Examination Board was established. So the need that was identified mm-hmm. by uh, the educationists of uh, the time was still uh, uh, very proud of those steps mm-hmm. that they took, the initiatives. The need was um, basically there has to be. Uh, uh, a syllabi uh, based on minimum standards of the country at least mm-hmm. uh, which are learning outcome based yeah. which are achievable as well yeah. uh, we needed to have a system which can bring in quality of assessment mm-hmm. uh, because if the quality of assessment is good then as I mentioned earlier you give the right feedback even it has a uh, an impact on the classroom teaching and learning. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, if the benchmark of the assessment is to uh, is to memorize the content of the textbook, then the teachers in the classroom will help the students to memorize the content of the textbooks. Mm. Because everyone knows that the promotion to the next level is dependent on the scores of those tests. Uh, and in many private schools, if I say, the appraisals of teachers is also dependent on the performance of the students yeah. in those tests. Um, and then there was there were issues of corruptions, cheating in the examinations, yeah. uh, the lack of trust and credibility in the qualifications, and that is why AQEP was established. Um, and it has gone through a certain journey uh, where schools are now trusting the qualifications. Mm-hmm. Universities are now trusting its qualifications. Um, and it is because how our students are performing at the level of university and beyond. Mm-hmm. Our students, uh, we, we measure our success yeah. based on um where our students ends up after graduating from grade 12 after giving yeah. our examinations um, we do the survey every year and we have around 98 mm-hmm. percent response rate of the survey and that shows 92 percent of our students uh, are able to get admissions mm-hmm. in the university mm-hmm. and out of these 52% of our students get admission in top 15 university of Pakistan. Okay. Uh, you know, around 4% of our students go to international universities and a lot of uh, universities are providing scholarships to our students. They are attracting our students to apply to those mm-hmm. universities. And I was very intrigued. Uh, why is that so? And I spoke to some vice chancellors, mm-hmm. registrars of the universities, and to give a crux, uh, what they say it is that it is not only the university mm-hmm. which brings in the intellectual environment in the campus, yeah. but also the quality of students who augments the intellectual environment of yeah. the campus. And that is what AKU EV students bring in. They uh-huh. add value to it. Uh, and I always tell them, you know, as, as a board which was made, um, as a brainchild of education of Pakistan, mm-hmm. it was our role to carry them till grade 12. Now we bestow this responsibility to you yeah. to carry them forward and, and take them through this journey. 
uh-huh. of uh, an education where they become a lifelong learner yeah uh but for this to happen there are yeah. multiple aspects that we look into mm-hmm. uh how our examination syllabi is made mm-hmm. um you know there are higher cognitive levels mm-hmm. defined there for students it is helpful for teachers how mm-hmm. to start the teaching how to plan the teaching mm-hmm. um the way we develop questions mm-hmm. it probes higher order thinking yeah you know the way we develop our test tools mm-hmm. uh is such that you can go into the depth and the breadth yeah of the curriculum you know it's not about choosing and having a choice and mm-hmm. options uh you need to see and ensure that the vision of the country mm-hmm. or our curriculum uh is being met or not mm-hmm. how do you assess it you know we are the only examination board in the country which has uh, psychometricians uh, which is an assessment department which ensures the quality of the uh, syllabi it ensures the quality of our test tools it yeah. ensures the quality of the scores that we provide you yeah. know, we do the post exam analysis yeah. and then the results are announced and this is year on year right yes this and we use technology as well yeah. you know and there are so many steps mm-hmm. uh that are involved yeah. to ensure quality mm-hmm. um then we are the only exam board which provides support to schools mm-hmm. as i said earlier that who is supporting teachers yeah nobody is doing that mm-hmm. um so we have taken that responsibility to provide that support to our teachers to let them understand and know mm-hmm. uh, what our standards are and how to achieve those standards mm-hmm. agar malum hi nahi hoga to phir wo aage nahi badh pate uh, and all the data that we uh, collect we do a lot of research and through those research uh, we can as a board are able to uh, make informed decisions mm-hmm. we are able to provide a lot of feedback reports uh, the kind of feedback reports schools are receiving from us mm-hmm. is something there's not a single examination board in the world who provides this kind of feedback the feedback is such that uh, it's based on students performance in the exams and for every subject and every question a school is informed uh, through a comprehensive report how your students performed in this question of this subject at national level so they get to know where do they stand where mm-hmm. their strengths are where their weaknesses are they can plan it they can strategize it mm-hmm. uh, and this is something that uh, because i am also part of uh, the board of trustees mm-hmm. of uh, international association for educational uh, assessment mm-hmm. uh, where more than 80 countries uh, examination boards are a part of it mm-hmm. um and during my discussions not a single examination board provide this kind of feedback which is very helpful schools have really transformed mm-hmm. we have some amazing amazing example of success mm-hmm. uh which you know gives us goosebumps whenever we yeah. think about it as brilliant based on what you've shared with me today um if you could go back in time and you could meet your younger self what would you say to him good question uh need time to reflect as well but the first thing i see is show um more aggression um be more bold um and never think that you can't do it and the reason i say this is that when i was applying for my phd's i started applying to mediocre universities outside pakistan mm-hmm. and i was told by my parents that uh, if you want to go to mediocre universities it's better you stay in pakistan and the reason i applied in those mediocre universities because that uh, that confidence was not there you know went to low cost private school government college public sector university but i think you know anyone can achieve it and uh, my phd thesis eventually got uh, toby jackman prize uh, uh-huh. in uh, at cambridge 
um, for the best PhD thesis in any subject. Uh, but during the entire time, I was always wondering if mm-hmm. uh, I had more opportunities. Uh, if I had created more opportunities for myself, I think I could have achieved more in chemistry. But well, no regrets. I've learned a lot, yeah. and life continues. Uh, I can pass on the knowledge to others. Maybe yeah. they can. fulfill their dreams or create their own dreams yeah. and make us all